Hello everyone, welcome to another live streaming uh, with Mr. Angelos Derlopas, our Director of uh, Education, and our educator Eva Tsegu, where we will be reading some scenarios and responding in the IC ICF uh, appropriate way. Mr. Angelos, would you like to start uh, reading the scenarios? Uh, thank you very much, Helen. Uh, I, I would like to emphasize at this point that we are doing this. We, we are introducing level of complexity gradually. And this is the reason that the, here in the, in the first episodes, you see very short, brief scenarios, two line mm -hmm. scenarios, uh, which is not the real case for the ICF exam, but we'll walk you through the uh, process says complexity gradually, hoping that this will benefit your own learning process. So having said that, I'd like to say hi to Eva. How are you today? Hi. Hi, Angelo Selene. I'm very well. Thank you. It's good to be back. I keep looking forward to my Great Thursday. to have you back. Yeah, Thursdays are now great. Uh, uh, Helen, would you like to uh, say the first scenario? Yes, of course. So, uh, a client is visibly upset and emotional. They are struggling to express their feelings. Let's see our options. Now, that is an interesting scenario. So, first response, it's okay to feel this way. Take a deep breath and try to calm down. Second response, let's focus on something positive. Tell me about the time when you felt happy. Third response, I'm here for you. Take your time and share whatever you need to. And response D, it sounds like you're feeling overwhelmed. Uh, let's try some uh, stress management techniques. Okay. Yeah, let's have a That's second look at the scenario. Client is visibly upset and emotional. They are struggling, struggling to express their feelings. What gets in the way? Eva, what do you think? Well, we're we're looking at um, presence here, like the importance of a coach's presence. Uh, and um, I always like to kind of uh, go back and what does that mean? Okay, what does it mean for a coach to be present? Um, and I think every coach has uh, its own, his own or her own uh, personality, you know, and, and way of being present and effectively. But here we're looking at ICF, what ICF uh, states as uh, the, what are the characteristics of, of a coach um, demonstrating presence, okay? So um, for me, presence is really, I would say the ability of another, of a, another human being to be in in a in a conversation, um, fully engaged, um, curious, uh, devoid of uh, one's own assumptions and um, uh, beliefs, and to to really, I, I would say, and be mindful of, of that. Like when you're present in a coaching situation, you're there for the client. So although, you know, we all, there's a lot of thoughts that go to our, our minds. Uh, what is important for a good coach is to kind of be aware of those and let them go quickly and be able to concentrate to, you know, and, and be present for what uh, is coming up for the client. So um, it, it involves being curious. Um, I think it also, it, it, it's like listening for who the client is really and not, and the what, okay. But, you know, really going more into the, into the, the, the whole system of the client. Yeah, you know, like um, and and no no judgment, um, 
you, know, you, you just, you put away yourself, you know, when mm -hmm. we say yourself, um, meaning your whole self, and you're there just to uh, connect with this other human being that's there for uh, for a reason and to have a developmental and and you know and, and a conversation that they want to talk about things that they want to talk about so mm -hmm. the coach for me is, is out of the picture here yes. a coach that's totally present the coach as as an individual as an individual is really out of the picture they're just there for the client yes I think what you say it's important and it makes sense. And and I reminded myself that when the 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 core coaching coaching competencies were first uh, defined and uh, by the ICF, uh, that com competency was named coaching presence. And ever since it was reviewed and revised, uh, it became maintains presence, and that signifies something. Uh, to build on what you just said, to um, remain in presence no matter what may be happening. So in our example here, uh, the client is feeling visibly upset and emotional, mm -hmm. and this might be this might be a condition that might be challenging for the coach to maintain their presence because the way the client is is feeling and expressing themselves might be some kind of challenge or, or, or shaking or might be a potential challenge for the for the coach to maintain their presence no matter what the client is bringing in the room or in yes. the coaching session Yes, because in that in, in in this particular scenario, um, there's emotional uh, emotionality that's that's there. Um, the client seems to um, you know is if we can go back to the uh, to the question uh, to the scenario um, for a minute, uh, Angelos, please. Uh, he is okay visibly upset and emotional okay which is, i mean the, you're observing something here as a coach and they are having a hard time expressing their feelings so that's another yes aspect. they are struggling and they're struggling okay um so it, in in pre when you're present you you are with them you um I think another thing is the ability being present is the ability to be empathetic also to show you know uh, empathy uh, and um, not only understand I don't think you know I, I don't like that word when in coaching you know, we're not there to understand uh, we're there to you know to help our clients move along to move forward Mm -hmm. um so uh, here i think you know a coach that that is present and list and, and notices the this situation or this uh, this client what the client is bringing to the coaching session um needs to, to to kind of be devoid of their own, you know, um, let's say, uh, and, and be, be confident in a way and, and just leave, allow for sp the space for the client to, you know, to, to feel, to feel that he's able to, to be heard. Okay. Um, and um, mm -hmm. being there for them. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to, um, you know, um, start asking questions. But it, for me, it, this this scenario brings out a lot of curiosity. You know, I, I, I'm I'm really, and I think being present is is also um, being aware 
of, you know, be, being in the situation of probably not knowing and, and also to, um, to be curious. Like, I'm really curious. Can I, yeah. Can I offer a little, a little bit, uh, something different here? Uh, sure. Because I think when you're talking about curiosity, you're talking about listens actively. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about being empathetic or perhaps even compassionate so you can help the client move forward, that's number eight. Uh, I think this has to do with the coach's self-awareness. How am I potentially affected or how might I be potentially affected by what the client is experiencing here so that I will be able to maintain my presence yeah. as a coach in service of the client and what the client needs to achieve. Firstly, uh, as it is stated in the in the goal in the in the agreement, and secondly, uh, to be in respect of the totality of the client and what the client is experiencing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, should we see the responses, the four possible responses here and pick up should again what's the best case and what is the worst case? Mm -hmm. If I may start, I think it's okay to feel this deep breath and try to calm down. This reminds me of a previous one we had uh, in some other episode. Um, mm -hmm. so it's okay to feel this way. It's like, this is not my place to say what's okay and what's not okay. Yeah. Although there might be a good intention behind that, this is not our position to say so. Take a deep breath and try to calm down. That might also sound as judgmental. Uh, you need to calm down. Calm down, sister. No, that would not be okay for me. Let's focus on something positive. Okay, and tell me about a time when you felt happy. Like he's making the client, uh, sorry, the coach here, he or she, he's making all the calls here. All yeah. the... How about and, that? And, and also telling telling the client or giving solutions. He's not not really you know present with the situation let me put it this way um that is really um very directive for me uh, yeah for me too very directive that, that's that's not our job we're yeah, not in my view yes sorry go ahead yeah uh, you know the presence kind of and, you know, for me, embodies um, a coaching mindset, okay? It, it's kind of, it's related. Um, you know, when you, you know, your your level of self-awareness as a coach uh, is, is, is high and you are confident and you are able to detach your own thinking, let's say, or thoughts or be aware of them and then put them aside and be there for the client. Um, that's that's not your job. You're not really there for this client. You weren't really noticing what's, uh, it's sort of like, let's move on now. It, it, it's like, okay, uh, let, it, it's okay to feel this way. So I'm here, I'm an expert, I'm telling you, you know, because uh, I've, I've read statistics, whatever, and you know, um, and calm down. All right, it's it's a bit, um, you know, playing the uh, the nanny here. Yeah, so I think we agree that both of these responses are bad, and I think that the worst one is response B. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, the worst for me is response B. Yes, that's the worst. So we are left for with responses D and C to see mm -hmm. which one is the best one. Okay. What do you say? Um, okay, C, I'm here for you. Take your time and share whatever you need, you need to. And D, it sounds like you're feeling overwhelmed. Let's talk about some stress management techniques. 
Okay, so I will, I go through process of elimination. For me, D is moving into action right away. It's not really being present and and being curious about what's what's behind all this. I mean, and asking the questions that will help the client um, understand his situation or you know feel uh, that he's being listened to. It's like, okay, I heard you. Yeah, you're overwhelmed. You're making an assumption. Okay, also. Um, or you're noticing his overwhelmness. It's not really an assumption, maybe. But you need to to you need to ask: Is he really feeling overwhelmed? I mean, you know, maybe it's something else happening there. You know, we don't know. And, uh, yeah, and so, let's talk about stress management techniques. Wow, that's like coming out of the. You know, <laughs> uh, are we there yet? I mean, it's. It, it's like moving fast, wanting to kind of move forward quickly to um, action. I, I so would not. Here, here's what what's on my mind. Uh, we assume that the client just came into the meeting, into the session, mm -hmm. and they don't have established the agreement yet. What is the goal for the session? Right. Exactly. So response D would be making a call. The coach in response D would be making a call of what is the, the agreement. And it's not clear. But response C leaves the space open for the client to share whatever they need to share. Exactly. He says, I'm here for you. Take your time and yeah. share, which shows uh, res respect, respect for the client's process. Yeah. And share whatever you need to. So they're pointing that back. What's most important for you to talk about today? Exactly. So for me, response C is the best uh, because it really shows that the client is is there for the client. Uh, the coach, I'm sorry. The coach is there for the client and and is curious because um, he needs more information to he, you know, the client needs to to offer or to have a discussion about what, why he's there and to dig a little deeper into, you know, what it is that he's he wants to achieve uh, through his coaching. So you yes, I agree. Leave, you leave the space there with, with response C. You leave the space, and it, it's very important, you know, to um, it, it really it, it, being present is really leaving space for silence, for uh, you know, pause and sharing, you know. I mean, uh, and it's not talking a lot; it's it's giving room to the client to to tell his story. Or to put it another way, holding the space for the client so they can express yeah. themselves authentically during the coaching conversation. Yeah. So I think we are set here with worst being response B and best being response C from the ones that are available here, right? Uh, I, I would like to remind our viewers that uh, as always, as we say, we're not always looking for what's the correct answer and what's the wrong answer, but what is uh, the better answer and what's the even worse answer to come up with the best and the worst. And it takes a lot of reflection. But as we're moving on in this process, I hope that we are all becoming uh, much better with our own way uh, of thinking, judging, reflecting, and uh, moving on in this cycle. So to pick up the best and the worst case scenarios. Thank you everybody for watching us and uh, don't Thank forget you. to like, share, and comment uh, on this video and watch out for our next episode sometime very soon. And to do that, you want to, to be notified. You want to subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the bell button so you get all the notifications about the new videos. Thank you, everyone. Thank Ellen, you. Eva.